What is up, everybody? It is Jeffrey Lyles. You were rocking with Lyles Movie Files. Joining me today, one and only little brother. How are you? Um, I'm doing good, brother. How are you? Outstanding. Jay King, how's everything with you? Everything is low, man. How, how, how are you, gentlemen? Good, good. Uh, before we get started, quick serious note. Um, heart, our, we are definitely thinking about all of our Asian American and Asian community listeners out there for this craziness that is that won't end, ever end seemingly. And uh, we're definitely standing with you through this crazy time. All right, so now Absolutely. let's get on with this episode. Jay. Our ride with The Bachelor and Matt James' experience is over. Are you heavily traumatized? Were you shocked? And did you appreciate the thickness of one Matt Harden James' beard? There's a lot to unpack, just like uh, Matt's beard on that one. Well, uh, the uh, ride was interesting. Uh, Sadly, the conclusion... It was almost what you'd expect in the first Black Bachelor during um, <laughs> way too much social justice. I mean, rightfully so, but that was, he did not, he, he was put in a very unenviable position. And then to find out at the end of all that, hey, did you know your fiance was at an antebellum ball, you know, but before the war? <laughs> and, you know, and you, out of, out of four women, you pick the one Caucasian woman, and this is the one you get. You're like, oh, no. <laughs> so, <laughs> literally I mean, insert the Homer Simpson gif on repeat, or or sideshow Bob, where he's just stepping on race. Oh no, that's the sideshow Bob, definitely on that one. It's like just, I mean, it, it's like Alia, everybody, everybody else is like, Matt, did you have a conversation? Kind of, hey, you do know I'm a black man. And if you're with me, you're going to have to deal with everything you see on TV. You're going to have to deal with that. And that's going to be kind of your life, too, now. And if we have kids, that's going to be their lives. Did you think to have that conversation or just kind of gloss over that one? I had several favorite parts about this after the final rose. My first was when he said, and then it dawned on me that Rachel may not know what it's like to be a black man in America. And I was like, dude, you know who would have know what it's like to be a black person in America? All of the black women that you sent out. Uh, the ones you just couldn't see yourself with because you just weren't feeling. And didn't and and again, it was like, hey, Matt, do you want to tell Michelle why you're not with her? No, I really don't. Nah, he was like, I, I don't want any parts of that. I'm not trying to talk to an angry black woman right now. I don't, want, I don't, I don't need that in my life. <laughs> But, hey, I need you to understand what it's like being a black man. Yeah. Good job there, man. I was like, man, you know, this is this is, this is is the sound of the last bit of sympathy pissing away from you right now. Um, <laughs> well, again, what I think it was when we were all saying, like, he's got a one out of four chance not to choose a typical <laughs> winner of the show. We know what, what, who's going to be the winner, though. <laughs> it was just, oh, come on. Inside oh, another Homer true. Simpson. I like those odds. <laughs> It was so just like, Matt, we're not saying you got to choose for love, man. Hey, that's in the real realism of the world, you should choose whatever you want. And if you were vibing with her, at least I had a gut to tell, hey, uh, I actually am really feeling Rachel more. He didn't have to really, I mean, he could have said that to everyone in the final four. He's sending home, like, hey, I'm really feeling somebody just, I really, it's the only girl I said. I love you too, versus everyone else on the ace said, hey, I love you. I think I'm falling in love with you. You keep that same energy. I'm sending you home tomorrow. Thank you. Please allow me to kiss you so as to distract you from you not recognizing oh, that I did like not. Jedi I have mind tricks with that. Like, it's like, I think I love you. Ha <laughs> good. Ooh. Yeah. It, it was like, it was so funny right, when I finally noticed it. I'm like, every time he's saying that, they're saying that, he's like, Thanks for really sharing that. And then he's yeah. like, he's, he's not saying anything nice to these girls. He's just making out with them like, I don't want to talk anymore. Right. Let, let, <laughs> don't talk. Don't talk. Just listen. Go ahead. Say, say Devontae. It's like, but. It was weird. It, it was and then, say what? Oh, and then his mother just totally 
dragging up all his childhood trauma. By the way, if you love someone, they're going to leave you, son. <laughs> <laughs> like, Matt like- needs, needs some serious couch time so he can just put all this on the side and be like, listen, my daddy left my mom, and I'm afraid that's what's going to happen with me. I mean, I mean, I, I would have thought he would have got that out before the show. But then he br- tries to drag his father in there and like, hey, I'm going to have my dad t- talk to and say he was a horrible father. I'm not apologizing for that. Uh, what? Yeah. I got you on TV to apologize. His, no, his, dad was like, <laughs> his dad was like, thank you. Let's talk it out. <laughs> like, it was very hilarious. He's like, are you trying to be like, hey, I don't want you to apologize for anything. I'm just trying to explain you. That what happened to our in our relationship? It was over. We we we, went, we grew in different spaces. But yeah, that's your fault, over. man. And I blame yeah. you for everything I had. Literally every relationship that I've tried to get into since then. I'm not, oh. I don't want any part of that. But, but you that. need to. No, you could have. You know, you you know my phone number well enough to call me for the bachelor and trying to have this heart to heart on camera that you could have talked to me when you were 15. So wow, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. That was that was very therapeutic, and it was trashed with one conversation with his mother. Oh no no, it was more fun when he decided to always bring it up with all the girls after he had that conversation, even if it made no sense in the conversation. Yeah. He's like, like yeah, I had a great uh, you know my day was good. Did I mention I talked to my dad? Yeah yeah, that was really good. I know you said you love me, but don't ignore that. You know I'm yeah, we're, we're on this now. We're on me now. We're we're past that. Yeah. But now did you after you, you didn't mention? Did you love on the after the rose where Matt really couldn't be bothered to actually talk? It was just blubbering. My favorite part on that was when old oh boy Emmanuel Echo, who sounded like a robot when he talked to the show, I assumed he was just trying to be sympathetic because he went in on both Matt and Rachel. I was like, oh, there you go. Welcome to the show. Um, I will need to make sure that the Bachelor budget includes a larger suit for him next time. Nah. It like he was about to rawr. He was trying to hulk out of that thing. I mean, he really was. It's a whole, hey, it's it's hard finding a good tailor in COVID. So he was like, I got what I got. I put on some COVID weight. I've been hitting the gym. It is what it is. Yeah. Uh, but, but, yeah, he was like, do you guys want to have a final embrace? And Matt was like, I can't see past my hands. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, Matt was having no parts of a hug. It was like, Matt, I didn't think, I mean, it's like, what else did she say during that conversation that you couldn't even bother having a hug, like, peace out, enjoy your journey, you know, you need to really work on that, but I'm not here for it. He was like, nah, I just think you need to work on yourself. He was like, I don't have energy to, to wipe away your tears. I mean, that's like the, the opposite of a wedding vow. <laughs> yeah. Well, again, he's like, I mean, he was so honest with it. I don't think, you know, everybody wants to see, you know, the first black bachelor, you know, in this show's history, in the show with an engagement. There's probably something else they're expecting from me, too, but that ain't gonna, we know that ain't going to happen. <laughs> we knew that wasn't going to happen when he said in the very first episode, I have a lot of responsibility, and I don't want to have to do something just because I'm the first black bachelor. Hold on, I'll translate. I don't want to have to pick a black woman, okay? Uh, Matt, do you also know as a first back, black bachelor, you probably should get engaged to set a trend. Nah, I ain't feeling that. Uh, so what are you doing on this show? I want to make out with a lot of women. Yeah, I'm processing my trauma with my dad. All right, so we also watched some other things. First off, The Walking Dead. Let's just break it down through the week. The J. King. This was an interesting episode Sunday. Mm-hmm. I liked it. I feel like they probably, I really would have liked it had they ended it like two minutes early. Uh, honestly, Jeff, I'm, I, I say this about it. This is one of those episodes. This was an episode that could have saved this show some seasons earlier, right? It was really strong, right? Like, it, it was, was like, oh, really okay. good. And shout out to Robert Patrick, man, and the writers of that episode. It was, it was, it, it started slow because you know what? One thing I hate of these dramatic episodes of The Walking Dead that go nowhere. <laughs> like we don't get anything out of it other than okay, this was uh, 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 progressing a storyline of two characters that we don't give a shit about. <laughs> you know, I hate those episodes of that show, <laughs> but this wasn't that. This was two characters that we've kind of, especially with Gabriel, we've grown to invest in. 
I've loved his, his transformation throughout this, especially the last few seasons. And uh, uh, Aaron's character has always been solid from day one since his first introduction. I was saying, do they, sorry, don't they do the same thing kind of with Strawn in uh, Fear the Walking Dead, too? Like, he's been in a relationship, but he is strand. Strand. Yeah. He's a person, and his sexuality is part of him, but it's not somehow the defining feature, which a lot of shows and TV makes instead of making like, hey, these are if you met this person in real life, this is what you mean. It wouldn't be just the sexuality. It's, I'm a person and my name's Anakin. Right. <laughs> wow. That was a nice day. That was well timed and everything. That was... That was, wow. that was fucking you, brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> Chef kisses Chef from all of us. You, yes. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well done. Well done. Absolutely. So yeah, but, but Javon, my thing with this episode was I kind of like that whole ambigu- in, <laughs> ambiguous nature of, hey, is Gabriel kind of losing it without the, yo, this dude was crazy. They didn't need to kill him. And I think I would have preferred the ending to just be like, yeah, I don't know about Gabriel right now. You know, you know, Jeff, I, I think it was really good to see that ending where we saw the twin because it was it was like Hitchcock. It was like either Hitchcock or Twilight Zone where, oh, my God, I didn't expect to see that, you know, and I, yeah. I appreciated that. Uh, but you touched on it. Gabriel's psyche during this time. I don't think so much that Gabriel's losing. I think he's finally assimilating to the world that he's in. He's not sheltered anymore. Because mm-hmm. if, if, if you remember his art from the early days of his character, he was afraid to be in this world. He was really afraid to be in that world. And, sure. and the, he was shook. The, the horrors of that world got to him. It, it scared him. Over time, he's had to embrace the gray areas of the world that he's in. And we got to see that in this episode and I'm going to tell you something. The way he finessed Maze, the character, <laughs> so Patrick said, yeah. And that was, that was brilliant. He finessed Ooh. him, man. He yo yo And when he lulled him in and he, you know, got him to, 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 to relax and let down his guard and get emotional with him, I thought, oh, man, they just made a friend. And then, BAM! Dude, I didn't see <laughs> it coming like, at all. I didn't see it coming at all. But you know who, who really sold it to me was Aaron because Aaron yeah. didn't see it coming. Yeah. And he was like, what you do that for? <laughs> and then Gabriel's explanation, he, he killed his brother. We can't take him back. It made sense. Yeah. It made sense. That's, and that's the thing right there. My wife and I were watching that, and I was like, man, that's something Rick would have did. Yeah, yeah. That's something Rick would have did. He, he took him right off. Yeah. Yep. So. I'm looking forward to seeing what they're doing. I think the strength of this season will rely 100% on how little we see Carol and Daryl. If we focus on other characters, I'm all in. Like the episode with Maggie, I was into it. Daryl was there, but it wasn't like he was the focal point. But for the most part, when we've seen them without those two in the spotlight, because we know they're going to survive, it's been really good. But don't you want to see the search for Daryl's lost love? I mean, which will make the basis of the next spinoff? Actually, of course, of course. Hey, Jace, I'm telling you, I'm I'm looking forward to that storyline getting tied up or uh, them exploring that one. Uh, one I want to see definitely is Maggie and Negan. What happens there? At some point, Negan's going to have to come face to face with her and her son. Yeah. That's, so that's, that's got to happen. Y'all want to see. Yeah, I don't think I don't think that Angela King is going to shortchange us on that. There has been something that she set up. Yeah, he would have. There's something. There's nothing that she set up that she hadn't paid off, and in I want to say 99% of the time, paid off well. So we'll see where this goes. All right, Jace, it's that time. Um, Flash wrapped up its sixth season, three episodes into season seven. And for the first time that I've been watching The Flash, I felt like maybe it's time for us to find a brake pad, push them real hard, and think if we need a season eight. You didn't care as much as I did about the, hey, let's throw Ralph in and let's melt his face. 
Hey, let's give him a Daft Punk helmet just to keep him in there. I thought it was lame. I felt like they were on the run. We'd already effectively written them off only to be like, hey, there's a chance that he'll come back as a different actor. I don't know why they didn't just didn't do that in this episode. Uh, I thought, I mean, I thought today would have been a, after melting his face, for some reason, I mean, Ralph can't get back to that old face. I mean, I mean, he had to work very hard after DeVoe to get back to that one. It's like, for some reason, the muscles just aren't working. So this is new Ralph. Yeah. And you know what? Put some science, have Caitlin do some sciencey reason on why it makes sense. And we'll just say, you know, uh, sure. We knew it was coming. All right, we're, we're okay with it. But it also, quiet, I mean, it doesn't quietly, it moves two characters off the team who don't need to be there. So it's actually a good thing instead of like, hey, why is Ralph still here? And why is um, Chester here? Why is Allegra? Allegra, why is, why uh, is those girls from here? Why is Iris even here? Jeez, I mean. I mean, and, and we still got Seal with her powers kicking around, and she's probably going to be on the show. I mean, in, in Team Flash Bunker too much, too. So Hey, listen. I'm not going to have you say any words about the Seal. Hey, that's hey, that's the only black romance we actually got in CW, so. Exactly. We're going to hold it down. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, again, and, and, I, and I say this. I gave them a pass on these three episodes because they are the finale of last season. It's like whatever they wanted to do did not get wrapped up. Ralph, old Ralph actor, instead, I mean, 10 years ago, but still stupid stuff. They, they made a choice to get rid of him. They had to work through that. I mean, hey, now, I, heard, I heard something that was kind of interesting. Apparently, the, the research staff on The Flash are the same people that do background checks on The Bachelor. Yeah, that's, that makes sense to me. Checks, yeah. yeah. No, it's like, hey. Quick Google search of these people. Or I'm sorry, it's usually that messy thing called Twitter. If they <laughs> have that before your breakout roll, delete that, delete that ish, and then start a new one. Like, I had no social media presence until. Nah, that was a that was a joke account my friend was doing. You can't prove nothing. I had nothing to do with that. And just can and keep it moving. Um, don't worry about getting that old count verified and all that mess. Like, no, nah, just go go to the next one, and nice. and just say, hey, yeah, you can't prove it. Doesn't even have a, my IP address. We're, we're moving on. Good uh, job. Right. Moving on. Superman and Lois. This show feels like night and day from the Flash. Like it's a totally different superhero TV universe. It feels like something they could make a movie out of. And the quality is strong. Fight scenes are showing Superman uses powers in different and unique ways. Like when he took old boy and froze him and it started beating him down. I was like, yo, that's something we haven't even seen in a movie or a cartoon. That was really good. Um, I love Tyler Hoshlin, Elizabeth Tullett. They are perfectly cast in those roles. Like when, when she went off as Lois, chewing out Morgan Edge and General Lane. I was like, yes, that is Lois Lane. And that was the vibe I had never gotten from uh, my girl Amy Adams in the Snyderverse. I wish we could just move her into the Snyderverse, but, you know, it's too confusing for them. But, man, she's so good. Tyler Hoechlin just gets the whole Superman, Clark Kent dynamic down. Um, I don't want to be like, oh, he's better than everybody except Christopher Reeve. But I think his take is really, really good in a superhero TV show featuring Superman and Lois. What do you think? Um, I'll, I'll, I'll go on to your last point. I think they actually made him a, a Tyler, a well-rounded Superman character. Uh, they made his Clark Kent not useless. They made him, I mean, he's not a reporter, but it's like he's learning to throw him into his new role as a kind of much more present father who's going to be good at that sometime, time. But again, it's, I'm like somebody being a newborn, uh, having a newborn. It's like sometimes you're not going to get everything right. And they do a good balancing act of that. Um, and let's say it's like, as I commented to you, the like scene where him and Lo- Lois are, uh, are getting into Sam Langs, that was like a tag team. Like, oh, that was, y'all look like y'all been doing this for years. I think that's, 
I mean, I think they were on some other show together, but it's like they're the lines they write for these guys is actually like, oh, okay, this you guys actually look like a much more fleshed out show than uh, any of the CW stuff. I mean, like, and I, and I, I like they go very much like Black Lightning. I think uh, like they actually look like they got the family dynamics down perfect, and like even this one when it's like, oh, he's I mean, Superman is fighting this non-powered bad guy, but it's like they came up with something for him to do that it's like, hey, Superman has to handle this. He has to use his power, a power we hadn't seen in the first four episodes. I mean, you know, it, it looked, I mean, the special effects on it looked really good. Like when he was getting shot and his ear was like, his face was lighting up. It's like, even just small stuff was like, okay, y'all have, I mean, again, y'all, look, you guys look like you got it. I, it just, as I, as I, I joke with my, can y'all keep this energy for five seasons? Because that's what sucks on these CW shows. It's like they come out to get really good or really bad and need some work. Or season two is like really good. And then that season three is like, oh, uh, well, okay. Uh, I, uh, you know, we'll, we'll give them a mulligan on this one. And I think kind of I'm probably giving Flash a mulligan on this season. It's like, but it's like, okay, you guys got rid of all the good speeds for villains. And, now, and you got rid of the rogue, so now what do you do with Flash to make it good and use all these characters you got on payroll that you really don't need? Bring in a new wealth. Chief, what's up, man? I know you've been watching Superman and Lois. We have long complained about a lack of good Superman in live action. What do you think of this show so far? Uh, it's been pretty decent. Um, uh, you know, I've, I've kind of enjoyed them moving back to Smallville, the dynamic with the kids, uh, you know, Lois uh, still getting in trouble. <laughs> you know, I, I like the uh, the little call button she has for him. Uh, she was like, uh, he was like, that's not going to uh, hurt me. She was like, click up. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, that part was pretty good. Um, so, yeah, it's been a decent show so far. Um, I didn't did I didn't see this week's episode, but I'm gonna go probably watch it tomorrow. But last week's episode was really good, so I'm looking forward to it. Actually, I haven't seen The Flash or Batgirl or none of them, and this is the only uh, super show superhero show I've watched so far this season. I haven't even seen Black Lightning, although I have been DVRing it. I just haven't gotten around to it, but this Superman thing is is pretty damn good so far. I think you're perfectly fine skipping Batwoman, a.k.a. the search for Kate Kane. And I think you can pretty much resume Flash starting with this coming weeks, because basically it's the start of season seven. Mm -hmm. And they reset to hopefully do something better than the admittedly complicated finale of last year. They had a lot of stuff to work around. So like Jace, I'm giving them a pass. For me, the real season starts next week, and where they go from that point will determine a lot. Yeah. Have they gotten Iris out the mirror? Yeah, she's out the mirror now. Yep. Okay. Well, I've got to watch yeah, for that. That's where right. I left it, too. That's right. where I left it, too. I was like, she in this mirror. I'm so tired of this show. And then COVID. I'm like, all right, well, all right. Yeah, let's give him a mulligan on that. <laughs> yeah, Gunner, it just it felt like it was too long because we've basically been through a pandemic since that storyline started and right. she'd been in the mirror like, for a whole damn year basically yeah, she was like then, yeah <laughs> yeah it just felt so long and it wasn't the gr- it was okay i think if they had gotten it out in the normal span of time it would have been fine we would have moved on but it was just like we waited for this wow okay um i don't know man <laughs> they had they had the black lightning people in a cave for like three or four episodes so she might have been I'm in the mirror for a minute on black lightning season three because of that i'm so bored with Jefferson I'm very bored in prison and i'm like yo i don't watch the show called black lightning to watch black lightning in prison okay again i know black what you're saying it's going to be up, black lightning picks up and chief just to give you a warning this season has actually been really good uh it does it's, pick up. Okay. Yeah, and and it's it's actually sad that this is the final season of Black Lightning because it there if looking at the two super I mean all the CW superhero shows it's Lois and, Superman and Lois and then Black Lightning and then 
splash and yeah, whatever else you got. Well, Jace, just because we can't have good things, there's a COVID outbreak on Superman and Lois. So the show is going no. to go on a bit of a hiatus. Oh, but what are we getting instead? Yeah. Legends you know, of just, tomorrow? I was, last week, I was really excited because I was like, we finally cured COVID. It's done. And now Superman and Lois are on hiatus because of COVID. And Supergirl's final season is going to start um, in a few more weeks. Yeah. So we're gonna get like you know the first seven episodes will be great, I and then the other five. twenty-five will be terrible. <laughs> I don't think so. I I think honestly, a little bit of a it's break a isn't a bad thing for Superman and Lois because it's been really good, and I think that when it comes back, it will still be good. And just based off of the timing, it's probably better for it to fade out while it's still got people excited while the falcon winter soldier does this thing on disney plus mm, good plan. shows up maybe black widow makes it to theaters maybe not and i think when it comes back it'll be like oh cool a good cw show that we're looking forward to watching because we already know how good it was right so I think oh i'll talk about was- supergirl being the first seven episodes sucking it or oh, being oh. great and then like the rest of them sucked um got i'll it. talk about that it- Gunner, it could be any seven. It's not the first seven. It's not the last seven. It's just seven. <laughs> somewhere in there. There's somewhere there's seven great yeah. episodes and the 24 episodes that they give us, great. Yeah. Do you, man, think I think, do you think they'll do, like, out of the last season, they'll literally be like, all right, we will make the best version of this show we've ever made to have Kara go out on a high note and explain why she's not around after this season. Hey, you know, I think I think if they just do what they did with Arrow, it'll be wait, 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 that's a really Jeff, that was trash. No, 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 that's a bad no, example. No. No. I mean, hey, if we were going to use it to be a, I mean, a backdoor pilot to Superman and Lois, it would have actually made sense. But we screwed that up, and we just actually made a full fleshed out Superman show that's just been twenty times better than anything we've seen on that whole show. Yeah, I think exactly. Supergirl is really going to look bad in comparison to Superman and Lois, just from the effects. Unless they do something, they got to step it up. They, yeah. They're not going to. They, they I don't know, on man. A, on a measure of consistency and mediocrity that I don't think they're going to overcome. So yeah. I have a theory on why Superman is really good. Well, I'd love Besides, you know, great writing and stuff, because they're following the comic book. Every other Superman iteration has followed a movie. Christopher Reeves movie or a, or a TV show or even a cartoon. It feels like even the writing here and the banter between Lois and Clark and all that. Hell, Lois and Clark didn't even, the show called Lois and Clark didn't even have the greatest banter. And probably then it did, but when you look back at it, you're like, eh, I don't know. It's not like the comics, you know? And this one, you really can't see that. These guys are yeah. actually like skipping the Christopher Reeves template. They're skipping, you know, even the, the some of the cartoons in the 80s and 90s. Like, they're just saying, no, we're going straight for the comics. We're not going for any interpretations of, of Superman right now other than what we got here. And then we'll throw in this father role. That's all they need. That's all they did. That's all they need to do. And that's what I think they're doing well um, compared to, like, pretty much all the CW shows except Flash in the first season of Black Lightning. Yeah. We'll see how it goes. I, I'm looking forward to seeing it play out. I, I'm still not loving the teen drama, but that's just the consequence of being on the CW. I think right. even though I don't love the teen drama, they're doing a pretty decent job. I don't know how long I can feel that way about it, but so far it's like, eh, I, I don't hate it. I don't love it. I'm kind of indifferent on it, but it, yeah. it isn't making me fast forward through the teen scenes yet. Yeah, it's not annoying, but it's not something I want to, like, grasp onto as, like, this is why I'm watching the show. It's like Dawson's yeah. Creek. It's exactly <laughs> like Dawson's Creek, where I'm like, eh, there it is. But, you know, it's not a terrible show, but I just can't get into it. Mm-hmm. Luckily, Superman has a Superman, and we actually have Superman and Lois. <laughs> I think the real problem for me is that Superman and Lois, it seems, are so good. And they're so yeah. well done that I'm like, I just want to focus on them. Can we get more of them? Because right. it's like Black Lightning where they're just jumping ahead to, hey, they're teenagers. 
are really cool too. And it's like, eh, but I'd rather just focus on the people you name and show up. Yeah. Okay, so guys, um, Warner Brothers screwed me, so I was not able to watch the <laughs> Snyder Cut of Justice League. I'm going to oh. watch it tomorrow like everybody else. I can't sorry. believe it. I'm so disappointed. Hey. Anyway, I'll like get over steerage, it. I'm man. I'm life. sorry. It's okay. I'll, I'll, I'll manage. I, I may... I, I told them to stay tuned for my review. Um, however, the early buzz is Warner Brothers is out of their mind stupid if they don't find a way to keep this going. And maybe Zack Snyder should have control over all of his movies that he edits in the future. Okay. And, hey, we need more of this. Well, and I, I will give them a slight, slight, I understand Warner Brothers' position. Because at one point they said that he was going to end up killing so many heroes. It's like, I know that might seem like a great idea, but you don't need to get in the point of killing off heroes. It's like, we just, just make it so we don't have them. You you already killed off Superman two movies in. So it's like, we don't need to have you kill off, say, Batman in the third movie. And we can't use it. We, I mean, we act like we can't find another Batman if we're going to create this universe, since we've already killed off uh, Robin, so there's no Nightwing we can bring in to replace him. So it's like, if you're already telling us you're taking this to a really dark place, we probably don't want it, because we want to be able to make 10 years of movies, you know, making billion-dollar movies. Of course, they make 10 years of movies and only have five movies to show for them, but different story. (laughs) I think Zach needs somebody in the early process of the plot to go, okay, let's not do that. I think when he actually makes the movie, it looks cool. He really knows how to create iconic imagery of the characters where it looks like great posters. And it's like, oh man, this embodies Superman or this captures Wonder Woman. And this is what Batman and Aquaman, et cetera, would look like. Um, Another thing that I'm seeing is that the arc with Cyborg, really good. Who knew? Um, Maybe... Oh boy, Ray Fisher had a reason to be upset about the Josh Whedon cut. Who knew? Mm-hmm. So, fellas, I would like to ask if you can carve out four hours of time between now and next week so we can break this down and see what we think about the Snyder cut and how much Warner Brothers needs to go forward with this Snyder verse. Because I think uh, I shall do so. Man, you want to see that between the NCAA tournament? Winter Soldier, oh, you're asking a lot of us, man. I do. And see, you're not doing it the jet way. You said Winter Soldier. Please put the Falcon at the beginning of that title, sir. Yeah. Right. Okay. Speaking of, since you did say that, and since Disney does love me, I did see the first episode of Falcon and Winter Soldier. And, oh, my gosh. Yo. I know we were excited. We were pleasantly surprised about WandaVision. I don't know if we're going to be pleasantly surprised with the Falcon and Winter Soldier. I think it's going to meet our expectations and in a lot of cases exceed them. Um, I mean, it's what you would expect from a Marvel show featuring two characters at this point. Great character development with people who we've seen kind of on the periphery, who we never really got to know that in depth. So they have plenty of room to flesh them out further. And Anthony Mackie, Sebastian Stan have a really good handle on their characters. And I'm not going to spoil anything, but it's just like, it's fun watching the Marvel Cinematic Universe on the TV, knowing I'll get weekly installments of this high level of quality. Where are you guys on your level of anticipation for the Falcon and Winter Soldier? Chief. My fault, I had to do. You said the Falcon and the Winter Soldier, my anticipation? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to it, man. I, you know, I, I've i always liked, you know, uh, the shit. They did a whole movie with the uh, Captain America and the Winter Soldier. So you got a good glimpse at them throughout that movie. Um, and then the Falcon, of course, you know, he was in everything, you know, all the Avengers joints. So, um, and I like Anthony Mackie as, a, uh, as an actor anyway. Um, so I think it's going to be funny, actually. 
I got a feeling that uh, during this thing, I'm going to do a lot of laughing. Um, so it's it's pretty, I think it's going to be pretty good. I think it's going to be a pretty good show, pretty dynamic, um, lots of action. And I think they're definitely going to also introduce other characters and situations that we haven't seen. I, I have a feeling like people are coming in there that we have an um you know, I haven't seen in this Marvel universe yet. So, um, and, and to maybe introduce, introduce the new, uh, set of Marvel heroes coming along. Um, so they might be using this as a springboard to a whole new set of movies. You know what I mean? Now mm -hmm. that, you know, uh, the, the original Avengers people have retired, you know, Captain America, Iron Man's dead, Hulk's arms messed up. Uh, Black you know, dead. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, uh, so all these things are, are going on right now, and, uh, I think that, uh, you know, maybe this is a prequel to redoing the Marvel Universe all over again, while DC kind of just spins its, its, its wheels in the mud, so. Keep hitting the brake. I'm going to back out now. Okay, right. Gunner, Malcolm Spellman is the showrunner for The Falcon and Winter Soldier, and he is a black man. And it's very refreshing listening to Falcon's dialogue and knowing, yep, yep, yep. He, he actually sounds like he is a black dude that you have a regular conversation with and with concerns and issues that matter to black people. What are your thoughts on the show? Oh, I'm ready for it. Uh, it looked like they were definitely, like, giving Mackie's character, Falcon, here in the MCU, the, the treatment that Marvel gave Falcon alone for a long time. Remember, he was just a psyche for a minute, right? A while. And then they kind of gave him his full-blown thing even before the Captain America. Um, handoff, right? So mm -hmm. I, I'm like, I'm, I feel like I'm going to see that. And just because, I mean, even the first scene of like the first and second trailer, like, what's your plan? I ain't got no plan. Peace. Like, it looks like he's going to form his own self. And whether that's a, like, I don't know if we're going to see the arc of, oh, I got to find myself, uh, you know, let me go find um, Kane again and find myself, you know. <laughs> As the as the bad girl, bad woman, whatever I am, you know, I feel like we're gonna get a real like, hey, I'm already here. I've been this dude. I just need to figure out how I'm supposed to be myself, this dude, and Captain America. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I feel like we're gonna get a better arc on that kind of take of replacing, you know, of of trying to like replace another character in a way or however that's supposed to be. Um, I, I so I'm excited very, about Mackie's character. Hmm? Yeah, I think you'll be very pleased then. Jay King, and what, then, are you, what are you thinking about it? Oh, sorry. I'm looking forward, man. The trailers look good. Um, and, you know, like you, that little bit of inside information about, you know, the writing for uh, 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 Anthony Mackie's character, The Falcon, I'm always skeptical about the dialogue for a, a brother. You know what I mean? <laughs> Like you said, they get us wrong so many times, man. They give us the bad haircut. You know, they make us say things and talk in a manner we, you know, not to say we're all, you know, uh, uh, uniform, but sometimes we really get done greasy in regards to how we're portrayed. And that's the one thing I've liked about this character is that he seems like a real dude, like not what somebody's interpretation of him should be or what have you. He seems like Hey, this is Anthony Mackie for real. Like he's got that leeway to play himself or be himself in the character. So I'm, I'm that part I'm looking forward to. Um, the action, uh, like I said, the trailer is, is is nice. So hopefully they do it some real justice. I think this is gonna be like it's, it's Disney, so it's gonna have a budget. It's not gonna look cheap and stupid. It, it, it's gonna be like a movie you're watching every week. So I'm, I'm really looking at yeah. it. I'm really looking and, forward to it. And the first episode was like 45 minutes, which is just long enough to forget that you're watching the TV show because there's no commercial break. And it's like, shoot, what's this credit's coming in here for? Oh, right, right. You're a TV show. You're not a movie. And I never felt like I was watching a TV show. I mean, that was crazy because the effects, 
the fight scenes. I was like, man, these jokers are like giving me a movie on the on the small screen now. And I don't know if I care about their movies at this point because like uh, Eternals, Black Widow, uh, okay, that's nice. But more Falcon and Winter Soldier, please. I think that's <laughs> the point, right? Because then yeah, when they come out with the movie, you're like, bang! Oh my god! I, I don't know. I, this, this slate of their movies is not exciting me. But I'm sure once, I mean, because I feel like I've seen 80 Black Widow trailers and none of the internals. Yeah. So I'm like, yeah, okay, that's cool. Can I get more uh, Hawkeye and can you show me a little bit of that Armor Wars or War Machine? I mean, those are the things on the Marvel calendar yeah. I'm actually looking forward to. Now I will be in the theater to watch the Fantastic Four movie, but that may be the first one until Thor that I'm excited about. We'll see. What about Multiverse of Madness? I think that comes out 2022. I mean, it's a minute. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, we'll yeah. See. Okay. yeah. I mean, that, that seems like a long time for now. That's a whole pandemic from now. Um, I started watching, because I was telling the fellas, I have been so bored with these bad movies that I've watched so far in 2021, where everybody's like looking at their fingernails and gazing at the ceiling and just telling about how bad their life is. I'm like, I need some fun in my movie viewing. So I've been watching movies that are fun to me. So I'm looking forward to watching the Snyder Cut or Justice League. But I've been watching Fast and the Furious. And if you want a fun movie series, that's, I don't think there's few that will top that in terms of just sheer, hey, where's your brain? I don't know. I left it at the door somewhere. But because I took it out, I can't tell you where it is. So I figured in the spirit of a little bit of March Madness, we would break down the best versions of a bunch of franchises. So we'll have a little bit of debate. We'll see how long this goes. But for now, let's start off with Fast and Furious. We've had eight installments. The ninth one is coming maybe this year, maybe. And I think there's three legitimate choices for the best in this franchise. But maybe you're, like, you're an outlier and just want to be different and just say something crazy like uh, Tokyo Drift. So let's start off with Gunner. What's the best installment of Fast and Furious? That's hard, man. It's between five and seven. No, five, six, and seven, right? Five through that's seven. That's the three I'm thinking. Uh, that's that's it right there. I mean, you gotta have to hand it to four to bringing it back. But I don't think four was as great a movie as the other three that I just mentioned, right? So the, which one with the gun to your head are you choosing? Five. Five brought it back for me. I, I was very skeptical about four. And I was like, huh, five made me want to watch four. You get what I mean? And then yeah, yeah. And then six, I think it was six, made me want to watch three. <laughs> right? Because <laughs> of that end scene. You know what I mean? I was like, oh, shit, they, yeah. they incorporated it. All right, cool. But I, I gun to my head five. Just because okay. it made me want to rewatch the entire thing again. Got you. Chief, how about you? Ejecto Cito. <laughs> <laughs> nah, nah. <laughs> um you know, I I I gotta give the first one. I gotta put the first one in there. Um that started it off. Uh it's the first one, if I'm correct, that's when he put the car in gear and did the wheelie. He had that black so. car. Yeah. And it downshifted and it, it, it wheelied. I think so. I think that was the Don't first hold one. Me to those stunts. I think it was the first one. Um, he was racing Paul, and I think he downshifted and that thing lifted up and did a wheelie. The whole car lifted up. Um, this is before, and it was kind of before everything got crazy. Because, you know, the yeah. stunt, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like, he was, like that was a crazy stunt. <laughs> Right, right. I'm not gonna say anything. yeah, because when that when the car does it up, you're like, oh, now I mean they, you know, they they jump, they, you know, they put their cars out of airplanes, they race the submarines, they, you know what I mean? Like, but that first one was they, normal. They, <laughs> right. It was it was like they were doing just regular stuff in a sense, even though they, you know, they did some stuff that was impossible. But now they they're truly they're really superheroes. Um, and these and these new ones. Um. 
and so I don't remember the near, I don't remember the numbers because you're like five, six, seven. I'm like, what, what, what? So, what well, they're country? basically iterations so, of Fast and Furious. So Fast so, and Furious Five is Fast Five, Fast and Furious Six, and then Fast Seven. But where are they? They're, I, you know, I, I forgot. It's so not Fast eight, Five eight, is Brazil. Nine. Okay, yeah, Brazil is the one. That's the one I'm talking about. That was the second one I was going to go with, Brazil. We're in Brazil. Brazil. <laughs> yeah. so, so, so that one there, see, yeah. Cause see, I can't, you got to tell me where they are in it. Yeah. Um, in the sixth one, they're all over. They were mostly in London. Okay, but Jason London, Staten, baby. That's when Jason Staten first appeared. Yes, at the end. Yeah. Okay. Seven um, is the one where they're all over and Jason Statham is chasing them throughout the globe. Right. That's when they introduced um Chick from um Same Game Ramsey. of Thrones. Yeah. Ramsey's. Thank you. Oh uh, right. okay. Okay, where both him and Luda were Terry Terry Luda were on her. Uh, yeah, that was the, that. the rock he, he baby's gotta go to work and he rips the cast off. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> um, so okay, so number one, Brazil for me, and I know this isn't part of the popular one. Uh, you want to go house and shop? Because uh, the, the Asian dude died in the Brazil one, right? Uh, no, that was six. He uh, died not, in Tokyo. That was died in three Brazil and died in Tokyo. <laughs> and we saw how he really got killed, sort of. In part six. Which one did Wonder Woman die? In? Six. Okay, six. so. But you know, I enjoyed Dubai. Which one was that? That was seven. That was seven. So okay, I'm gonna go with I one. I know, dude. It's like seven. they get really good at five, six, and seven. It's like eh, right. you say one, that, you can't be wrong. That building, that building scene where they were riding that car through that yeah. building in Dubai. Yeah, yeah dog. Uh, building the building. Was that shit, cinematography right there was great. Yeah, I'm gonna go with one, five, and seven. And like I said, okay. once kicking it off, five because Brazil was just a joint. Um, I enjoyed that joint tremendously. And then seven, just the the the, the, the Dubai factor combined with uh, <laughs> Tyrese. You know, he was funny in that joint too. He was like, "Let's get this party started. It's your birthday." Yeah. So yeah, <laughs> so yeah. And uh, back when you thought Ronda Rousey was a tough girl. So, <laughs> you're right. <yeah. laughs> Don't hit her in the chin. Jay King, how about you? Uh-oh. Jay King, you still there? Oh, man. Uh, I'm still here. I'm still here. I'm really thinking about it because three of, those, three of the movies out of the series I really like, and I'm trying to. Uh, I gotta say, at gunpoint, man, five, six, and I'm the wild. I, I, look, I really like Too Fast, Too Furious, because it was, it was, it was that early two thousands ridiculous. Yeah. About it, it was so dated was and dumb cow. and cheesy. Yes, yes, and I love that about it. Um, it's like watching Biker Boys now, yo. I, oh my God! I love Biker Boys because it's so it, it it is stuck where it is. It's the product of its time. Who was in Too Fast Too Furious? That was Tyrese. Uh, that was Tyrese's was, first. Mm-hmm. That was in my and head. Luda. That okay, was when he got like, introduced. So yeah, and Luda. Taco meat. He said you got your taco meat hanging out. Yeah, you got the taco meat hanging out. <laughs> hey, that right that there, was even man. Ended. I love it. Yeah, yeah, and she was fine as hell in that movie too. Yep. Um, I, I, those are my three, man. I just, for some reason, Too Fast, Too Furious just sticks out to me because it, it's just it's stuck in that time. It's it does not age well. It is dated as shit. It is <laughs> it is stamped, and I love that about that movie. I'm sorry. I think what I like about Too Fast, Too Furious is the fact that it is so early 2000s. And John Singleton really was like, yo, I'm just going to have fun with this. And this is going to embody yeah. Miami. Everybody's going to be in bikinis. And the car is going to be super neon. And, <laughs> and right, yeah, right there, that part, you just, you, you hit the nail on the head. You described it better than I could. It did not take itself seriously. And I love that about it. Because what are we doing here? We're racing cars, man. 
Like Chief said, they, they turned into superheroes. They they run up from submarines and shit. I'm like, yeah, all right, all right. What are we even doing anymore? Now they're international spies slash. Oh, they, they're like GI Joe with cars. Like, yeah, yeah, man. I get a good GI Joe movie, Fast and Furious is just gonna have to do. It's gonna have to do. That's right. We're not gonna get a good GI Joe movie. Sorry. It doesn't seem like it. Jace, what's yours? Uh so. The funny thing is, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make it easier on my. I actually, I like them. Uh, Fast Six is my number one because it is them versus the evil. They're evil clones, and I mean, I mean, the fact that Tyrese Evil makes that joke is like, hey man, this is evil us. I mean, they're pretty blonde. That's definitely Brian. I mean, just like now it was. I mean, that had some action. We saw uh, Han and Giselle's death. I mean, you know, what led to. Uh, Han's death in the next movie. I mean, it was just like, that one kind of set up everything. I mean, the next movie really well. And, I mean, then you go to Jason Statham. That is not my actual number two, but that was, it, it sets it up, the story up really well. Uh, my number two, I mean, this might have been, you know, because that is, Javon said, it's like, Fast Furious 2 is just, I mean, it was like funny, like, we've literally watched that movie before we went to Miami, they were like, this is why we're going to Miami. And it was <laughs> uh, we like, we're on a Miami kick. It was like, we're watching that, we're watching Bad Boys. And it was like, yeah, this is, I mean, this you get all of Miami. Um, and kind of it's ridiculous. I mean, in that time frame's ridiculousness of it, it was, you saw like some of the building blocks of the series. It's like half the actors in that, in the series start in that movie. And they had the same personality type, which is really cool. Um, trying to think. And, and probably my next one would be, yeah, I'm going to go unpopular again. Uh, I like Tokyo Drift. I mean, it didn't have but all, all the But I actually, I mean, like, the one thing is, I really do like the drifting scenes in that movie. Uh, Tokyo Drift has style to it, which I think mm-hmm. people don't like. It has an intentional tone of this is the style of driving movie. that we're introducing, and we're taking you Americans out of your comfort zone, bringing you to a new land. Um, Lucas Black's character was kind of like whatever, but he was fine as the outsider. Mm-hmm. But the Han was such a cool addition to the race, and it was like, oh man, I want to know more about Han. And that whole him and DK, like that stuff was cool. And even Bow Wow, the aspiring WWE rapper slash wrestler, oh is good for what he's doing in that. And so crazy. it really embodies yeah. the whole, let, let's double up on what Tokyo or Two Fast, Two Furious did and show you what Tokyo is working with. Yeah, let, let's say, say like, like, Gunner, I, and I know you're going to come in and say we're idiots, and I'm okay with that. I'm used to that from you now. Um, but there, there is, you keep saying idiot shit like, all Star Superman and Fast and Furious Three. What the Again, hell? And let me say this. <laughs> let me say this. <laughs> it's like you want to go like could could you? I mean, like all the. I mean, there's not a Fast and Furious movie you probably couldn't watch until after. I mean, that last one, Fast Eight, Nine, whatever the heck it was. Yeah, dude, they were fighting a sub. Again, dude, the submarine joint was tight. And I'll give you Tokyo Drift, man. Han was a good character. They didn't spend enough time on him. That was my move. That was my problem okay. with the movie. Okay, but Bow see, Wow, who gives a shit about Bow oh, yeah, Wow? Like, it was hey. the worst part of that movie. And then the main <laughs> character just wasn't strong enough. Hey, but again, that's and how they took you out we of got, the We got rid of those people who weren't the strongest. Yeah. Ones, and then we got Han is the one who's with the group. The it's like, out. It, it worked out perfectly. Yeah. Um, and That's why I like five. I was like, oh, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> That's part you know, of Fast and Furious. There he is. That's um, why I love five. Yeah. Like, I, mean, I, I think that's – it's you, you get to drive in, and like I said, Hot is the coolest dude. It's like, if you guys want a cool character, it's like, I'm showing Bubblegum. I ain't got no time. He's the now. coolest dude right. in the franchise. He's so right. cool. And they don't try to play – I love how diverse this, the whole franchise is. But they go against so many stereotypes that you would see if this was helmed by other people. Like if Michael Bay was mm-hmm. doing it, he would try. And maybe he'd throw in some diversity, but it just wouldn't be the same. 
and also Josh Adam. Whedon would have all white guys. Oh doing God! It. But also yeah. remember, I was like in this scene where he's like, "Hey, we're gonna fight this dude." He's like, he gets his butt kicked, and he's like, "It's not some fake kung fu like he knows he's been growing up on." Yeah, like, dude. Man, he's not so I ain't got time like, for all this. It's like I'm not a fighter. I I race cars, dude. I love that. And yeah, so my favorite is six because of the impossibly never ending runway scene. How amazing <laughs> it is. Like, the fights are just crazy. Like when they start taking those little small race car deals and they're just forklifting cars, that's great. Um Ronda Ronda Ross, Gina Carano is like throwing it down with those fight mm-hmm. scenes. Like, they can go from physical fights to shoot them out, shootouts, and, like, everything works. And Luke Evans is such a great villain in this series. I think he's my favorite because he's he's calculated. And he's like, nah, Toretto, I got you. I know how to beat you. You've got a family. Your code is your family. It's a weakness. And he didn't plays up on it. And then we get the tag team fight at the end with Dom and – and Hobbs going against the big tank German dude and and Owen Shaw. It's like I get hype watching that movie every time. Like it's the first time I've watched it. So that was fun. Let's see. Let's go with Mission Impossible next. Tom Cruise. He's working on two more because he doesn't age fast enough to stop the franchise. I will say that these movies have continue to do pretty decent they've been pretty good yeah and even though i'm like hey dude you're too old i'm still watching still enjoying them so i'm, I'm gonna put it up to you still doing that well man yeah i mean it really good should action not... movies they're yeah. really good action movies though that's why yeah dude it's like just gonna fill the gap until somebody comes along and take the crown all right so what is the best mission impossible uh chief why don't you start off uh, I'm gonna say the one with, uh, and although the last one I, the last one in my memory I could watch with Henry, with Henry Cavill, I was, that was mm-hmm. that was an excellent movie. Don't get me wrong, the twist or whatever. It's got to be the one with uh, Shorty's father, um, uh, John Boyd. Father, John Boyd. Um, <laughs> the first one. Yeah, yeah that's. Right. The first one to me was the because at the end when they kind of showing how he created faked his own death and yada yeah. yada so on and so forth. I like that first one. Um, and again, like I said, the first one start out normal in a sense, and then <laughs> right, the franchise blows up, <laughs> and then the next thing you know, and John Woo gets a hold of it. Right. Off to the races after you know, that. He's, he's, you know, he's, he's got some reins and he's riding. He's riding an airplane, horsey style. And you're like, what? The? <laughs> well, yeah. Um, so, so these first, like the first couple of movies, is always kind of normal for these long franchises. And then I think that after a while, to keep you in them, they're just like, you know what? We're gonna spend 130 million in stunts. And then the whole movie is just action stunts, and and then you're just like, oh wow! And by the time you leave the movie theater, you're like, oh, you know, what was the plot? I have no idea. But the action, was <laughs> you know what I mean? And um, so <laughs> that's what I'm saying. That first one, when it was just starting out, was to me the best one. Um, you got a you got a sense of who he was. They did, you know, they did build up a character, yada, yada, so on and so forth. The stunts wasn't over, over the top. Um, they were great, you know, they were good, but they weren't like, oh, you know. And you could kind of concentrate on what the movie, you know, what all was going on in the movies, little, you know. And then, like I say, from that popularity, from that one, it got crazy. Even though they were all good, I think the introduction of the first one was the best one. That's a very fair point, Chief. Because Jean Reno was was great. An old girl. We want the money, Ethan. Mm-hmm. So good. And and there was a little mystery to it, which they lost pretty quickly after that. Right after the second one, because John Woo was like, "Yo, we don't need to do that." John Woo. Um, Jace, how about you? Oh, okay. Um, my uh favorite one. Is actually uh, Mission Impossible 
three. Uh, that's the one where they have. Uh, if I'm and let me ask if I'm, I'm mistaken. It's like that's when he's uh, training Kerry Russell, and he was yeah. retired. He he thinks he's out of the game for real. Yeah. Um, so it's Seymour Hoffman's bad guy. Yeah. <laughs> it's like uh, Ethan, I'm giving you count of five. I'm gonna put a bullet in her head. It's like then you start and then he does. It's like, oh well, okay, that's his way. Mm-hmm. Oh wow, we're off to the races. And that one also had Ethan around a good team of guys who were, I thought they were actually going to, if they were going to keep a Mission Impossible franchise, you would see all of those guys kind of move, at least for the next two movies, with them. Uh, it was a diverse cast. And you're like, oh, okay, we got uh, these guys. Uh, Lawrence Fishburne is in charge of MI. I mean, uh, MI. I am not. Yeah, and I'm like, oh, yeah, we, we got a good thing going. And again, in like the Kuala Lumpur scene, that man, that was just really cool. Um, it's like again, I, I, I love Fallout, but I think if we're going best of the six, I gotta I gotta take that as my number one. Okay, Gunner. I, I I'm shocked that I agree with Jason. It is. Oh, wait, three. Speak that, please. What? I I I I agree. I think. Okay, I love the John Woo version because it's just ridiculous John Woo stuff. <laughs> Does for no goddamn reason. It really Does is. all over the damn place. <laughs> <laughs> but John Woo is definitely well, a gun expert. Tunnel. Right, like what the hell? John Woo is definitely a gun expert, so you're going to see different types of guns and things. It was, it was great. Tom Cruise doing his own stunts as usual was great. Um, it was just pointless stuff. Like, why am I spinning the motorcycle all the way around in a circle to fire at you? Because it like, looks cool. Because it, it looks so cool and super <laughs> early 2000s BS. So, what was that in late 90s? I don't remember anymore. But three, don't get me wrong, I love two. If I would say number two is my second favorite, right? But three brought it back to normal <laughs> after that. <laughs> and I was like, Oh, here we yeah, a real thing. Oh shit. And I'm a big fan of fellow Seymour Hoffman guy rest his soul, so you know what I mean? Like man, him being a villain, he's like, I'm account to fight exactly like yeah, I'm account to fight. I'm like, Oh he actually uh did that. Yeah. That's what we're going right. to and this was so long ago, Jason, did we see it together? In the theater? I don't think so. I don't I don't know. That? It was that long ago. Yeah, so, I did been though. <laughs> We might have actually seen it together in the theater. That's how long ago it was. Like, my God. Um, anyway, so, I, yeah, I'm, I'm agreeing. Like, three brought it back from the John Woo and put it on a better track. You okay. know what I mean? For it to be a, a longer franchise. I think if it stuck All with right. the ridiculousness, it wouldn't have lasted as long as Fast and Furious. That's true. Jay King. Uh, God, I got to say Fallout. Uh, what was the one he was hanging off the side of the damn plane? Uh, 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 all that was one of them. He, that was Ghost Protocol. That was oh, wait, Ghost wait, Protocol. you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right, right. No, that was Ghost he, Protocol he, for real. Or was that Rogue Nation? He, he, I don't know. No, I feel like Rogue that was Ghost Nation. Protocol when he was hanging on the train, on the plane. No, that was Rogue Nation. That was Rogue Nation. Ghost Protocol okay. to me seems like, you know, it's funny. I was watching, uh, I was binge watching Archer over the yeah I I I was binge watching Archer over the holidays up until January right and I forget which season it is it's like season five or six season five or six of Archer is basically uh, 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 Ghost Protocol because (laughs) (laughs) you know they get implicated and 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 they have to shut down the agency yeah it's pretty much it's Archer Vice there it is there it is. Um, remember that? Yeah. The, yeah, it's but that's the thing about it. It's the one of those three movies that I remember most because the other two was just action. I, I don't I don't know the plot of either of the other two movies. I just know that I love the action sequences. <laughs> I, I, I watched them and I instantly forgot them after that. It was like, what was the name of that movie, man? I'm trying to think. It was a movie I saw a couple years ago with uh, the guy that played the new RoboCop and Liam Neeson. And um, oh gosh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, 
I, I don't remember a damn Is thing it about that about movie. <laughs> Jeff, I don't even think it was that complicated. It was just gunfight, blow up. I think that was the title, like oh, gunfight and explosion. Right, because he was protecting his son. <laughs> yeah, it was his son. But it was so okay. They gave you that five minute setup, and then the rest was just Liam Neeson shooting the shit out of New York City. <laughs> that was the rest of the movie. You didn't give a damn about anything else. I don't even know if he saved his son or not. I don't. I don't remember what happened. I do remember Maybe there was a lot did of guns. Taken again. Pretty much taken with his uh, his idiot adult son. That that's what it was. Wow. Um, yeah, those are my, those are the three that stood out the most to me because of the action. I saw the other three. Um, I agree with Chief too because Mission Impossible One was a real movie. Uh, <laughs> two was look, <laughs> it was two thousand. It was everybody had that kind of, and, and when it came to the action genre, everybody had that post Matrix hangover. So you had slow mm-hmm. motion effects for the sake of slow motion effects. You no know one was the worst uh, was when Charlie's Angels did it. That was the part oh, I was like, yeah, but y'all need to stop this right now. Oh like, this movie does oh, not need the matrix. Yeah. That was, it that was it did that movie's everybody's jumping the shark moment. That was like, okay, <laughs> done it. It's over. That's in bullet time, man. That, that that's that's really it. Didn't John Woo consult on that one? No, that was McG or something. That was McG, yeah. wasn't it, that guy? Oh, yeah. my God. I don't know. They had yeah. the same effect. Everybody was just like, let's just John Woo everything. Let's use his style. Good God! Yeah, it was the it was no that reason. popular style between the Wachowskis yeah. and uh, John Woo. It's like mm-hmm. everybody had to throw that uh, elements of of, of their uh, filmmaking, their mm-hmm. action sequences in their movie, and it just didn't go. It just doesn't go with everything, you know. Nah. Like it worked for the Matrix. Stop. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Let's end it there. Yeah. All right. Well, mine is just to be different. Fallout because the scene where Henry Cavill's loading up the machine cannon arms is like, <laughs> it's great. And I like where you have a villain working among the crew because that's a, a callback to the first one. And I thought the elements with the cast were good. And I just like the way it played out. Like, wasn't sure if old girl from earlier was working with them. And there was like this, well, maybe she's not. Really like that one. Before my favorite was three, and I would die on that hill for a long time. I just liked action scenes and Fallout just a little bit more. But in terms of acting with a bad guy, Philip Seymour Hoffman still is my favorite villain in the series. Well, that was way longer than I thought. I like this discussion, so we're going to do two more next week. But for now, fellas, it's that magical time. Who, if you possibly have any nominees this week, or nominees for Dummies of the Week? Jace, why don't you start? Dummies of the week. Oh man, you know we we haven't talked about our favorite show besides The Bachelor, Married at First Sight. What? Since we can't, we're and let's be honest, you guys are addicted to it, and we are too. Um, and it's because of our favorite couple, Chris and Paige. Um, uh, so once again. After, hey, I got a baby mama on the way, and I'm bringing baby mama to have a date with you, but you didn't pop off like I wanted to, so I'm mad about that. So I'm going to have a one-on-one conversation with you just to see if I can really make sure I can get this uh, franchise spinoff going. I'm going to have a conversation with you, and just to see if I can make that. The producers come back to me one more time. I'm going to see if I'm trying to make this. I'm going to see if I can make relationship work. Because I may be falling in love with you. Tune in next week to see. And you know what, Paige? Paige uh, is my dummy of the week. You know? Because everybody else, after somebody says, hey, I met you a week ago. I got a baby mama on the way. Uh, she used to be my ex fiance like two months ago. Paige is, no, nah, I'm going to see where this takes us. And you know what? He said he might actually have think he has a future with me. So I'm going to give him another chance. I'm going to let this reset happen. I'm sorry, is most of the females that maybe she didn't have good girlfriends that can't tell her, are you a fool? <laughs> it's time to walk away. Maybe that's the case, but if she doesn't, is not listening to them, or she's not trying to scam for her own franchise after this, Paige is my dummy of the week. Now for a very long time. Uh, Gunner, how about you? No, I actually don't really have one. 
right. Chief, you got one? Senator Rob Johnson. How about that? I don't know. He's an idiot. I'll just throw somebody out there. Uh, yeah, so I've seen like a couple of videos this week of people who are trying to get away from the cop by shooting at him. Stop shooting at the cops. You know what I mean? Like, I, it's not going to work out well. I mean... It doesn't seem like a successful strategy. Yeah, so now you, you've got fleeing and evading, and you're going to turn that up to attempted murder or perhaps the death of yourself. So, um... If you have a gun in the car, go ahead and take the gun charge. Get a lawyer. Uh, and, 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 you know, hopefully you have no priors. You can probably get out of it. You know what I mean? The gun charge isn't really that. Uh, you know, it's not really going to necessarily send you to jail unless, of course, you have a body on it. But Unless you have a John Woo special effect and doves flying around. Yeah. So I've seen several people. Otherwise, it's poetic. Yeah, yeah, trying to take a shot at a cop this week because they had a gun on them or a gun in the car, and they were pretty much killed. And I'm, you know, and although I want to, I want to say this in a nice way. I don't feel bad for you in a sense. Like I think you kind of had that coming by trying to kill someone else. Um. Even though I don't want to see it, like I, 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 I wish you would have made a different judgment call. Um, I just, I don't see. I think that's the dumbest thing in the world. One of the dumbest things in the world, um, besides you know eating cinnamon and Tide Pods and things of that nature. But Gorilla Glue in your hair. Yeah, and glue, glue and Gorilla Glue in your hair. Um, <laughs> I think shooting at a cop is... is Who would be up- stupid enough to do that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think shooting, shooting at a cop is, is uh, up there on that scale, man. Um, go ahead, you know, take the charge, fight in the court, man. Stop shooting to get away. That is... That doesn't make sense. You know what I mean? Um, so that's that's my dummy of the week. Anybody who's going to shoot at a cop to try to get away in order to catch later on that murder charge. That doesn't make any sense. So you got a way to go to jail. All right. My choice is all of the Pearl Clutchers who called the SEC this week after Cardi B and Megan Thee Stallion performed the WAP because they were like, this is obscene. Let's get this off my TV. I I don't want anything about this. Okay. Is this the 80s? What the hell? How many times during the Grammy performance did they say, hey, Cardi B and Megan Thee Stallion are performing WAP? And you can't say in 2020 that you don't know or heard that song. And you looked at the video and be like, you know what? I think I really should watch that video and see what they're going to perform live. You have ample warning. If you haven't put your kids to bed at 10 o'clock, you deserve everything you're about to see. Like, no sympathy at all. Gosh, you deserve to see them two scissoring on stage. Exactly. The background playing there's some holes Your kids in this are up house. doing that. You cannot complain, man. Hey, by the Dude. way, your children, your children have 24/7, 365 access to so the electric sex. Yep. They have 24/7, 365 access to electric sex. They have phones, they have tablets, they have laptops. My old girl's probably right now watching somebody do something inappropriate. This is the world that we live in. Take it away from You have a choice. Take it away from them or proceed. And if you're mad, and if you're mad, it's because you got that dap, not that (laughs) wop. The milk's gone bad. Two thumbs down. Javon, why don't you <laughs> <laughs> um, This goes out to another group. I know what was that last Sunday, uh, not this past Sunday, the Sunday before, you know, Oprah gave or had that interview with Prince Harry and Meghan Markle. And there's been like a, a, a week and a half long fallout that continues, you know, followed by Sharon Osbourne, Pierce Morgan, they're falling out with their whole thing, right? 
My dummy are the people, my dummies are the people who were kind of surprised that uh, the British royal family could be racist towards uh, or have racial, uh, in, racially insensitive attitudes towards Meghan Markle. No. It's the British royal family. It's the British royal family. What do you did you think it was going to be like a Tyler Perry movie where they, there was some hesitance at first, and then before you know it, they're playing, it's getting hot in here at a cookout, it wins the palace, and the queen is busting it low? What, what did you think? What did you think you was going to happen? You watched Baps, and, you know, they were milling everywhere. It was like she was cornrowing the queen's head, and her and uh, Kate Middleton was going to go out shopping for a uh, Gucci bag. What, what did you expect? What did you expect? <laughs> Oh, man. I mean, but but can we be real here for a second? She's not Megan's not that type of black person. I'm gonna say it just like that. Struggling you know, with the funny. ambiguity and all that bullshit, right? Like oh, yeah. people do, that's fine. But at the same time, this is what you get when you choose ambiguity. Sorry, you thought it was gonna be all cool. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, hey, it's not. If you it didn't think not. that was going to happen to you, and I read that somewhere too, I'm like, I finally, somebody finally articulated in a way I couldn't. Mm-hmm. You, you've kind of lived in this ambiguous world where your skin tone currently helps you be more right. acceptable. There's a privilege right. with that. I know mm-hmm. that's just how life is. <laughs> so you go over there, and they're like, oh no, you're still no. black. You don't know how You're to deal with a, that because you never had to deal with that. You never years. had to deal with that. So she finally had her wake up moment, right? Thank you. She couldn't handle it. And I was so, thinking like, what the hell did you, what did you expect? What did so you include expect? her into those dumb Oh, she's included. Sorry, okay. I was just trying because... to, hey, Gunner, I, I, I included her as well, but I'm trying to be, a, you know, tiptoe the line there. Because somebody's going to defend, but I don't, you know what, that, the, hey, hey, the hat's <laughs> off now, the, the gloves are off now, yeah. What did you expect? What did you expect? Right. This was not going to go it, as you planned. I, I don't, I don't understand it, but you know, everybody got to have their yeah. wake up call. They cool. Everybody. The dude, the dude seemed cool, you know what I mean? I ain't, I ain't messing with you. He's like, look, I'm following you. So, mm-hmm. you know, that's. That's commendable, I guess. You know what I mean? I ain't going to hate on the whole situation, but mm-hmm. I nip things in the bud. That's all I got to say about that. Right. I, under- I understand what how life works. So, mm-hmm. uh, Hey, living without blinders on, you know? Right. Um, <laughs> you don't want to be black princess? Not at all. Not at all. No um, blinders. All right. Yeah, there's... Let's go no blinders. Yeah, because we're heading over on our time here, and Jace uh, has a show to work. But uh, save that thought for later, for next week's show, where we break down two more of the best of the franchises, and the Snyder Cut of Justice League, because we've all got four hours. I know Javon does. And, yeah, let's try to watch that Walking Dead, too, because I think it'll be interesting. Fellas, thank y'all as always for rolling with me. Thank y'all out there for listening. This episode of Loud Movie Files has been fun.